Good evening and happy Thursday, Shearwater Health clinicians. We are streaming to you live via Zoom, and this is In Focus, a Shearwater Health presentation where we get exclusive and personal about your Shearwater Health key leaders. I'm Aziza Mondanyad, and I'll be your host. Tonight's spotlight is focused on a remarkable and prominent key leader and pillar of Shearwater Health. A man whose passion in providing global health solutions encompasses his vision for the enriched future of healthcare professionals. Please watch this. Please welcome Chief Executive Officer for Shearwater Health, Mr. Tom Kendrod. Hello, everyone. Hello, and Thank Tom. you for joining us today. Aziza, thank you for uh, being my co-host and uh, going through this process. I would like to just real quick thank Avic and Jen uh, for organizing this uh, discussion today. I think it's a great opportunity for um, me to share my vision for the organization and talk a little bit about my background and history. Uh, at Shearwater. So uh, thank you to everyone for joining this evening. Thank you, Tom, for joining us. And if you wouldn't mind facing the camera and just saying hello to our Shearwater Health teammates joining us via Zoom, we have people here from the Philippines, uh, U.S. nurses, medical coders, medical allied and support enabling team. So if you wouldn't mind just saying hi to everyone. Hello to our Shearwater Health uh, team members. Thank you for taking time out of your day today. Some of you are coming off from your uh, work day and some of you are starting your work day. Uh, so thank you again for uh, joining us and hopefully you'll enjoy this conversation. Yes, hello everyone as well from me. So Tom, I believe this year, it's now March, this is your first visit to Manila this year. However, you were able to visit as well last year briefly in November, mm -hmm. right? However, before that, as we all know, you know, the pandemic has affected all of us and it definitely affected your travel plans. And back in November, you were able to talk about the Nurse Compass program how did you find that so far? And now that you're finally back, how are you feeling that you get to meet more of your teams here? Yeah, so it, it's, it's been interesting. The, the pandemic was very challenging for me. Um, I come from a family of five kids. That's a lot, very, yeah. Yeah, we're very tight and um, there were four within five years of each other. And so that, that tightness and that family environment and approach um, is how I really approach the, the employees at Shearwater Health. We're all family. Yes. We're all operating towards our same mission to improve healthcare outcomes globally. So during the, during the pandemic, it was very challenging for me. Three years of not coming to the Philippines. Prior to the pandemic, I made 40, about 40 trips to the Philippines. I four zero. Four yeah, zero. I would come over here about six times a year. And uh, it was a way for me to engage with the employees. And so I was very thankful um, that I had the opportunity to come in November and launch a, an innovative talent recruitment, uh, talent development uh, platform that we uh, announced called Nurse Compass Program. Mm -hmm. And uh, today we're very pleased to announce that we have over 400 registrants that have enrolled in that Nurse Compass program. Um, so it's been a great initiative for Shearwater. Um, but this trip, uh, I'm here for a week this time. Okay. Uh, the November trip was just for a day. Um, I'm really uh, looking forward to engaging with new team members. We hired a lot of uh, new employees in the last three years that I haven't been able to eat, meet individually. Um, and uh, you know, that's what my focus will be for the next, uh, next couple of days, is really engaging with the employees because that's what I'm passionate about. Wonderful. At least you've got that week here in Manila with us. Yeah. So now here in In Focus, this is where we get a chance to get to know our Shearwater Health leadership. So allow me to pick your brain a little bit about your ideas, the goals, and you know the direction of Shearwater Health. So let's get started. And I'd like to ask you, Tom, how has the organization been in the past decade, especially um, for you and your experience leading the team since 2012? Yeah, so I joined the organization in January 2012. At that point in time, we were a much different company. In mm -hmm. fact, just about two hours ago, 
I was meeting with one of our teams here in the Philippines. And at that point in time when I joined, we had four employees on that team. Uh, today we have over 60. And wow. that's a function that really drives a lot of the process for nurses to migrate from the Philippines to the U.S. And so when I joined, you know, 10, 11 years back, we had around 300 employees between the Philippines and the U.S. Today we're over 4,500. We provide services to probably 50 to 60 different U.S. healthcare clients. Our, our business has expanded significantly. And we wouldn't be able to accomplish that with all the dedicated employees that we have in the, here in the Philippines. And also very thankful for um, the healthcare um, interest of the Filipino population. It's mm -hmm. been a great uh, culture for us. It's been a great country for us to establish um, our business presence. And so it's been a great 10 or 11 years. Our business has changed. Our business has evolved. Me personally, I've changed as well. I've gotten married and have two kids. Congratulations. You know, six nine yeah. years old. So uh, I had to really um, adjust my more to a work-life balance, which is important as your water health. I see, because your personal family was growing as well. Yes. Now, I'm going to throw out some numbers here. I believe that Shearwater Health has been in the industry since 1973. Yeah. And then in 2001, the U.S. Nurse Recruitment Platform was launched. And then 2009, Clinical Process Outsourcing was built. You were president in 2012. Can you tell us about the growing pains or what you experienced back in the day when your teams were just growing? Because you mentioned back then it was only about 300. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit more about how that stage was yeah, for you? I, th I think it's, it's really interesting to think about the evolution of the business and uh, discuss one of our core values, which is entrepreneurial spirit. Mm -hmm. And so when we launched the US uh, nurse recruitment platform in the late 1990s, um, it was a new model for us. Our chief strategy officer, Ted Mirhoff, who's been with the organization for 23 years, wow. wrote the business plan. And we went out and executed on it. It was brand new to our, our organization and we had great success from uh, 2000 to 2009. And that's when we launched our clinical process outsourcing division. Mm -hmm. And once again, what we saw was Ted had a vision to leverage the Filipino healthcare uh, in employees to provide support to U.S. healthcare. And so entrepreneurial spirit is at the core of what we do at Shearwater Health. It's a very important value for all of our employees to possess when they join if they want to be successful. Now over the course of the last 10 years, we've grown the business significantly. We had a presence of sponsoring nurses from the Philippines and India in 2009. Wow. Today we're in 35 different countries sponsoring nurses to go to the U.S. You know, we've grown our outsourcing platform here in the Philippines you know, by, by um, 3,500 or 4,000 employees we've added. And so there's been a lot of you know, challenges along the way, mm -hmm. especially in the last couple of years with COVID. How do we operate in the new COVID environment? How do we operate in a post-COVID environment where our businesses transition to work from home from insert in delivery center workflows? And your business was really the essential workers that we needed during the pandemic. The, the essential workers, the nurses that were providing patient care in the U.S., yes. the nurses that were providing clinical, clinical services and processes from the Philippines, everyone was so important to what we were trying to accomplish from, a, from an overall uh, company perspective. But you, you, what, you, what you have to do is you have to rely on that leadership team. You have to rely on the middle managers to drive the mission, drive the vision of the organization. And we have a great team here in the Philippines that has executed very well during those uh, difficult times. And so we'll continue to expand and look at new initiatives over the course of the next decade. We'll be successful, hopefully more than, we're, more than we fail. And if we're yeah. successful more than we uh, fail, then we're, we're, we're going to be uh, experiencing some great growth and great opportunities for all of our employees here in the Philippines. Wonderful. So it's nice to see that vision realized of entrepreneurship as well as, you know, healthcare professionals being the true heroes, especially in the last couple of years because of COVID. And now, speaking of growth, we mentioned earlier and you pointed out that you now have over 4,500 4, uh, employees. And in the Philippines, all over the Philippines, majority of those are nurses. We also yeah. spoke about that earlier. And, you know, internationally, Filipinos are known or acclaimed to be nurses. In fact, it's kind of become part of pop culture as well. When you refer to a nurse, they are nine out of 10 yeah. Filipinos, yeah. right? So what do you think about that when it comes to nursing talent? And Filipinos are the top choice of your partners. Yeah. What's your take on that? It's, um, we established our roots in the Philippines in the 1970s because of the, the nursing talent. I see. Um, so you saw it as far as the 70s. It, we saw it 40 then. years ago, and we saw the opportunity 20 years to pivot the business, and again 10 years ago. It's it's um it's interesting. There used to be a surplus of nurses in the Philippines, um, and they have great uh, critical thinking skills. 
Uh, they're educated in English. They understand uh, U.S. True. healthcare. They're uh, more um, adapted to technology uh, and utilizing technology. So there are a lot of skill sets that were very positive from a Filipino perspective when mm -hmm. we look here to expand our nursing uh, profession. Um, but it's it's uh, it's emerged and. Um, there's been some unfortunate uh, challenges from a nursing perspective here in the Philippines, and in, in the last um, in the last two years, the hospitals are actually in a deficit here in the Philippines, first time in decades, mm -hmm. and it's because of COVID, and it's not only because of COVID, but it's also because organizations rely on the Filipino nurse to migrate to other countries, Canada, the U.S., the U.K., the U.A.E. They've all looked to Filipino nurses because they, they're such a, a high quality nurse that really possesses empathy, which is, cri which is criti critical to be successful in uh, nursing. Good. And so there's been some disturbing trends recently, but what I would say in the, last, um, in the last year, there's been an uptick in the number of nurses that are graduating and sitting for the local nursing exam. Mm -hmm. And the passing rate is now at 75%. And so we're hopeful that the nursing profession continues to be an attractive profession for Filipinos, and we'll continue to see an increase in the supply um, over the course of the next five to ten years because they're great nurses. Yes. I mean, it's, it's been fantastic to see our, our, our business grow and the nurses here in the Philippines grow with us. They do have that special Filipino care, the yes. special touch yes. of our nurses here. That's why yeah. I think that's why they're flourishing, mm -hmm. right? That's what mm -hmm. you mentioned earlier. And now, speaking of the Philippines, Tom, I know you have a very busy schedule, but have you had a chance maybe to visit other places here in the Philippines? You know, aside from Manila, what's yeah. your experience been like? Yeah, uh, unfortunately, I haven't taken advantage of it as much as I should have. In the 40 times you yes, visited? Yes, 40 okay. times of coming to the Philippines, 40 times of making that 25-hour flight from Nashville, Tennessee uh, to Manila. Um, I primarily spent time in Manila. I have gone to Cebu. Um, uh, multiple times to meet with our employees there and look at expansion opportunities. I've had the pe uh, benefit of traveling up to Ilo Ilo mm -hmm. to look at expansion opportunities, but it's all been centered around business I and see. work. I haven't necessarily um, taken advantage of the, the personal aspect and the, and the attractiveness of uh, certain parts of the Philippines. It was interesting, just a couple hours ago, my uh, CFO, uh, Shearwater CFO, was here in Manila this week as well, was showing me a GoPro video of his weekend last weekend. Where did he go? He went down to southern Philippines, oh. a, a, a Bowles? Oslob, Os in Cebu, oh, yeah. to see the whale sharks. He did the whale yeah. sharks, he did zip lining, canteering, jumping off from cliffs. He did all those things. And so when I watched that video, I told myself I have to start taking advantage of that. And the other thing I want to do is, um, you know, I've been here again 40 times in the Philippines. I haven't brought my family yet. I want I my, I want my wife to, and kids yeah. to be able to experience what I have um, multiple times and just get to know the Filipino culture better. Right, I see. I mean, we can put that on your bucket list. Uh, definitely you know? on the bucket list. A lot of things are on the bucket list. Yes, and I mean, aside from traveling, I'm sure it would also be nice to meet and greet other Shearwater teams outside of Manila. And because of the past two years, you know, we saw the pandemic force people to be more flexible with their work schedules. You know, a lot of us had to work from home and that really had to force us to see what we could do, how we could work around that. You know, the pandemic really made us pivot and yes. shift in that way. And it also resulted to your employees living in other provinces. Yes. So in the recent talent data demographics of Shearwater Health, 2022, there is a difference in USRN and PHRN talents residing outside of Manila and Cebu. I believe you have teams now in Davao and Pampanga, and in Baguio as well, yes. in the north. So yeah. what do you think about this trend? Yeah, so one of the benefits of um, COVID, uh, it, it's tough to say there's been a benefit to COVID. I mean, we have to see the silver lining. We have to see it, point. and a, there is a future. And that is that um, the, Philippine, the Filipino government has adopted a work from home strategy for the outsourcing sector. And um, you know, th there's currently 1.5 million people that are employed in the outsourcing sector in the Philippines. Mm -hmm and the goal is to grow it to 2.8 million over the next six years. And they understood that work from home has to be uh, an opportunity for the employees. I think it's a fantastic thing for our business. It's a fantastic thing for our employees. You think about some of the commuting times that some of our employees were, were commuting one to two hours each way. They have families at home. This mm -hmm. allows them to spend more, times with, more time with their families. 
it's going to really create a better overall employee experience for not just employees at Shearwater, but employees in the outsourcing industry. So we'll continue to expand our footprint into other provinces. We are in five provinces today, um, and we continue to evaluate other provinces because we can take advantage of this work from home. So super excited about this for our employees uh, as we go through the next uh, wave of growth for Shearwater. Yes, that is a good way to see it because working from home, I mean, it just allows you to do so many other things. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, healthcare, we can really use, you know, that widespread sort of, you know, sense in, in every aspect, especially in different provinces, different yeah. regions of the Philippines, from north to south. That's right. Right, which hopefully you will get to visit as well. Yes, exactly. When you carve time for it. <laughs> and now going back to sheer water health, being in the clinical process business, you know, as a growing organization, uh, I mentioned earlier, you had growing pains, challenging times, and of course, experiencing the pandemic, you know, the team was really forced to be resilient. Yeah. You know, we all had to figure out how to work around this, as well as being the heroes yep. of the pandemic. You know, it affected everyone. So I'd like to ask you, what were you most concerned about during this? Did anything scare you in particular? And as the head of the organization, how did you face these challenges? Yeah, it, it's, it's sad. I mean, first and foremost, um, the health of our employees and their families was yes, the most absolutely. important aspect. Because they're risking their lives COVID. as well, yeah. We had we have nurses that were working, you know, at the bedside in the US treating COVID patients. Yes. And it was just it was very difficult to hear the stories that they were telling about um, you know the patients that they were trying to treat and just not having a lot of flexibility. And so unfortunately we did lose a couple of employees to COVID during the during the COVID environment or COVID um, pandemic. So but that was our number one focus, was how do we um, really um, make sure our employees are safe and yes. healthy. And um, not just them, but also their employees, or so their, their and families. And their families, yeah. yeah. And so, but after that, it was how do we stabilize the business? So a lot of organizations, when COVID hit, they went into cost-cutting mode mm -hmm. and terminated employees. We want to take a different approach and say, how do we retain our employees? Mm -hmm. Even though our business was, was impacted to the downside, we didn't want to terminate employees. It wasn't the right time to do that. So we thought about this from a bigger picture, longer term perspective. And how do we grow the organization coming out of COVID because we knew it would eventually um, uh, come to an end. And that's what we did. So we were very proud when we went into COVID, we didn't terminate anyone. Um, we retained our employees, even though we had excess staff and bench staff, we wanted to make sure we had a commitment to the employees and it was the employee first. And it would be the right decision longer term for our organization and for our brand and for our recruitment practices. And I'm very proud that we actually launched that initiative and executed on that initiative. That's amazing. Congratulations on that. Thank you. And now speaking of another sort of natural calamity that we had, at the end of 2021, the teams in Cebu were hit by the strongest typhoon that's been on record in a while. And that really affected a huge number of sheer water employees. In fact, it was featured on the news internationally as well yeah. as on your social media pages. You know, but in the same breath, you know, they were also showing how they were helping each other and they were showing their first-hand experience, you know, dealing with Odette, which is what that typhoon was called. What were your thoughts during this time and how do you think the teams help each other recover and get through this challenge? I mean, first off, the teams did a phenomenal job. I, 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 we couldn't thank them enough in terms of how they executed on the strategy. Um, but from an organizational perspective, I think Odette hit around the December 17th, 18th time. 16th, uh, 16th December 16th, December yes. 16th. That in itself was the most difficult decision and difficult time for people because we're in the holidays. Exactly, Everyone's approaching Christmas. For the holidays. Yes. We're approaching Christmas. And so once again, the, the safety and health of our employees was, was a priority. And we had all of our employees in Cebu that we didn't, we, we tried creating um, a communication strategy with, but there were some employees that we didn't hear from for three, four weeks. And that's and scary. So it's yeah. very scary. So our teams executed though, we, we had some employees that volunteered to get on a plane or once we were able to get on the plane uh, two or three days later, but fly to Manila to continue to service our clients in the US. And that just shows the dedication, the commitment they have to Shearwater sure. in our mission. Or our mission. So I'm very pleased with the overall um, team and how we came together, rallied together, got on calls again during a very, very difficult time, not only with, the, with Odette, but it being the Christmas holiday and people's, impact, and people's families being impacted. So we did do some, um, some uh, outreach to employees that were impacted, helped, helped to rebuild houses and provide financial support in, in other, that's other areas. But that's great. Uh, but it, it's important from an organizational perspective to take those initiatives 
uh, in times in difficult times like that. Yes, and you know these challenging times they have a great way of bringing people together even though it's difficult that's when we really rally together whether it's in the philippines or internationally so it's it's beautiful to see teams like that and teams yeah. like the ones here at shearwater health getting together and getting through that helping each other helping the people you know and that really shows camaraderie and resilience during the challenging times so what else tom are you proud of, of teams i'm proud of just all the success that we've had um, our business, again, our business of bringing nurses to the U.S. has been around for 20, 20 years, and our clinical process outsourcing division has been around for 12 years. Just the commitment of our employees. Our relationships with our clients, they're not one-year one year relationships. We have some of our top 10 clients have been clients of ours for seven, eight years. And you don't build those relationships, the trust, the respect, without having a great team in the, in the Philippines. And you and, don't do um, it overnight either. You don't do it overnight, and there's a lot of investment. There's a lot of cultural building, team building that needs to take place. And I'm just proud of everything that we've accomplished in the last you know, 11 years since I've been here. Current employees, former employees, they've all been part of it. Yes. And it's just a, it's a great story and um, really proud of what we've accomplished from a company perspective. And as you said earlier, they're, they're like your family. They are. They're your family here in the Philippines. They are. You know? so, Thank you for that. Thank you for sharing that. That's beautiful to hear. Very inspiring. So now I'd like to move on to a new topic. Mm -hmm. And it's still part of this segment, but we would like to get to know you more, <laughs> Tom. So aside from growing this team of nurses and providing the global health healthcare outcomes with your client partners, can you maybe tell us what have you been up to? Um, first, I'm very passionate about what we do at Shearwater Health. Okay. But that can't be 100% of someone's commitment. Family is very important to me. And like I said, I grew up in a family of uh, five kids with my parents. I mean, that is like a Filipino family. Both you know? working <laughs> parents, and uh, they made every sacrifice for us as we grew up. Wanted to, wanted to provide a lot of different opportunities for us. And so my life in the last 10 years, like I mentioned, I had two kids and got married. And that's really where my, my focus is right now. Family. Is family. And... Um, you know, watching the kids grow up. And you know, you always hear people say, kids grow up so fast. They, they do. really do. It's, it's, it's amazing that, you know, just yesterday I felt like my daughter was born. And so unfortunately, I had, fortunately, unfortunately, when my uh, daughter was born, she turns nine on March 30th. She's practically um, a lady. She is, <laughs> she's almost a teenager and she acts like a teenager. But when she was born in uh, 2014, I uh, had a trip planned to the Philippines to see our employees. And my daughter's, uh, the due date was March 18th. She came 12 days late. Oh. My trip was scheduled for April 2nd. And my wife, how grateful I am to have a wonderful wife, said still make the trip. Mm -hmm. And so my, my, my daughter was two days old when I made my trip over the Philippines to meet with our employees. And so, you know, those are the types of sacrifices you sometimes have to make. but. It's, it's that family environment, um, you know, it's, it's really focusing on them and seeing, that, seeing my kids grow up and providing them different opportunities. We're, we're a big uh, ski family. Not a, not a common sport in the Philippines. Well, but I mean, you can try water skiing water here skiing, maybe, water you skiing. know. <laughs> this is snow skiing. Yes. And, um, and I like to spend uh, my free time uh, up in the mountains. I see, um, okay. Very, very, uh, very um, uh, avid skier. Um, so that's, that's what I'm training my kids to be as well. Um, so hopefully uh, they'll, they'll continue to gravitate towards skiing and continue to perf um, perfect the sport. And I suppose when you do your travels, like you are here now, you get to, I mean, technology nowadays is great. I'm sure you get to FaceTime mm. them. You it's get fantastic. to show them what you're doing. Yeah, you no, know, I, I took a picture team. of this set earlier yeah. and, just, and sent it to them. My daughter text messages me every night and morning. Um, I FaceTime with them. It's just such a different environment versus 20, 30 years ago when we didn't have these, these That would have been much harder. So hard to engage. And, and even go back further, when my parents, uh, you know, my dad traveled a lot when I was younger. And, um, you know, we had rotary phones. You, you don't dial and, and snail and, mail, and, yeah, remember? And, and, and <laughs> snail mail and stuff. And so it is, um, it, it is one of the benefits of the technology advancements is the, the ability to engage. And you can um, communicate in real time with them. You're, it's, it's fantastic. Like we're doing now. You're, exactly. <laughs> and and um, they, for all I know, they might be watching this. I hope so. <laughs> Hello, if you're watching. Hope to meet you one day. Yeah. <laughs> now, on another note, um, do you have, uh, going back again to the pandemic, because again, it put a lot of things on hold. And it really made people worry a lot. But it also made us refocus, recalibrate. Yeah. 
did you have anything, new interests, new discoveries that you realized or you know, that you were enlightened by? From a, from a personal perspective is, um, you know, I realized that I have to continue to make time for what I want to do, uh, spending time with the family and stuff yes. like that. And so um, I made a commitment to, to uh, make more trips, spend time with the family, disengage. I think right. it's important for people to disengage from the devices. It, uh, it's very difficult to do these days. Um, but it's sometimes helpful to just take a couple days off and spend time with your loved ones, spend exactly. time with your, with your family. And so I think that's one thing that I've done differently as a result of the pandemic. Um, the other thing is I, um, I take on different sports and, and so skiing is one that I've been passionate about and I've been skiing for almost 45 years. Um, but uh, golf is one that I kind of go in and out on. I see. Um, and so during the pandemic I started playing some more golf. Okay, good. And so it's a great time to engage with some of my friends in Nashville and uh, you know, get away from the family for a little bit of a True. break, which you sometimes need. I mean, you, you do want that quality time yeah. with the people who are special to you, Yes. right? Yep. And so aside from golf, aside from skiing, do you have any future plans, other hobbies you want to take up? Maybe something that you've been putting off for a while and that you now want to prioritize, something what? you really want to do? Um, besides just continuing to have success with Shearwater and my employees and the team here. That's given um, already. <laughs> yeah, it, no, it, it's related to skiing actually. Oh, okay. And it, it would be um, uh, probably one on the top of the bucket list. Um, so I, actually there's a couple things. One, but skiing is, um, I want to do what's called heli skiing. Oh, I've um, heard of that. Yeah, that looks so, really exciting. Yeah, so it's, it's heli skiing is where you're off on a mountain. Yes. It's not a ski resort. Helicopter takes you to the top and you ski to the bottom and uh, you stay in a cabin uh -huh. and um, it's just a unique experience. So that is one of the, that's high on my bucket list. It's probably low on my wife's bucket list. I'm sure. Um, because you <laughs> it's are- It's very dangerous. You're, it's you dangerous, know? you're in avalanche area. <laughs> yes. Um, that's the first. And the second is, um, it's my uh, 10 year anniversary um, this, this coming June. Congratulations. Thank you. And um, it's a milestone birthday for my wife. She turns 40. Happy birthday um, to her. Yeah. and so. We want to uh, relive our honeymoon with our kids. Oh, that's and beautiful. And so my daughter is named after the Isle of Capri in Italy. I see. Where it's one of, one of the areas we spent on our honeymoon. So we want to take her to the Isle of Capri. You can take um, her to the Blue Grotto. And, and, re, and relive it. Yeah. And everything. So uh, there's a gentleman in, uh, in Capri that is a fourth generation Caprigian. Yes. That he refers to our kids as his grandkids. And That's so he's adorable. getting older, so I want to relive the honeymoon and take them and let them experience And that. they get to meet him. They would get to meet him and he would be, it, it'd make his day. He doesn't have any grandkids. That is And so he refers movies. to us as, our, our, our kids as his grandkids. So you've been in touch with him oh, all yeah, these my, years? Every Christmas. That's Every beautiful. Christmas he emails my wife and we engage and send pictures and stuff like that. Of your growing family. Of the growing family. And my son's name is Hampton. Yeah, he's, he's actually, his, his first name is Robert, but we call him Hampton, which is his middle name. And so he, he's really looking forward to meeting them. And that's so great. I think we'll try and do that in the next uh, year or two, hopefully. Okay, that's wonderful. Well, I, I'm excited for you to mm. celebrate your 10th year anniversary and your wife's milestone. <laughs> so congratulations <laughs> to you both, to the whole family. Sorry, Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> but um, speaking of plans, you know, the Shearwater Health Philippines recently had their kickoff in January. And also in early February, it signaled the start of a new beginning of breakthroughs for the team. And 2023 seems to be a promising year because of the career development programs like the Nurse Compass program that we so passionately talked about earlier. So it's really an exciting time to take the leap in their careers. Yeah. What are your visions for 2023, Tom? Yeah, so our, our number one focus area for 2023 is going to be talent development. And, um, you know, COVID has created a very challenging labor market globally, mm -hmm. not just in the U.S. or in the Philippines, but globally. And so we took a step back and did some employee surveys in the last six to 12 months and tried to, tried better, tried to better understand what the employees look at for a, um, from an employer perspective. And, um, and so our focus is on talent development. Let me talk about just a couple of different initiatives that we've launched yes. because it's, it's a way to give back to the Filipino healthcare community as well. And so we, you mentioned the Nurse Compass program, which is a platform that we launched in uh, September of last year. And we've had great interest in in our employees signing up for the Nurse Compass program to eventually migrate to the U.S. or if they want to stay in the Philippines and continue to pursue career opportunities in the Philippines, they can do so and they earn financial incentives in both, uh, both um, career options. But equally important is we launched a, um, a Shearwater Scholars program. Oh. And the Scholars program is 
where we are actually subsidizing the fourth year nursing education um, tuition amazing. for fourth wow. year nursing students. And um, in exchange, those nurses, upon graduation and passing the local nursing license and nursing exam, they're committing to work at one of our hospitals here in the Philippines for two to three years. Great. And so like yeah. I said earlier, there's a nursing shortage in the Philippines right now for bedside uh, clinicians. We're trying to get the, the recent grads to commit to practicing nursing here in the, here in the locally. Philippines. Here locally, yeah. And so I'm very proud of the Shearwater Scholars program that we launched and it's a way again to give back. The other thing we did, we partnered with an organization called ABCs for Global Health. Um, it's a nonprofit that was started by um, a Filipino that moved to California. She's a Stanford University um, uh, medical professor. And uh, she has created a nonprofit that provides uh, mobile health care to the residents of Papanga. And so we partnered with her and we're contributing financially to her initiative. And so we actually have our first mobile unit that is traveling around Papanga and providing health care services. Um, and it's wrapped in a ABCs for Global Health and Shearwater Health. And so our goal is to launch that and expand that to other provinces outside Papanga. And so, again, it's another way to give back. And so all this is about branding and talent development and recruiting. Growing. We don't want to yeah. rely on poaching from our competitors to build and hire. We want to show our employees that there's a five to 10 year career path when you join Shearwater. Mm -hmm. It's not about joining an organization and staying for a year or two and then leaving to take 5% higher comp. You stay with Shearwater, we're going to invest in your career, we're going to invest in the platform. And you and invest in them. You're, you're investing in them, you're investing in their families. Yes. Right? We want everybody, everybody to be successful and we want to understand what that career path looks like and customize one, a, a, a plan for you. Um, so that's the number one focus area for the organization um, is our talent development initiatives that, we're launched, that we have launched and some of the new ones that we will be launching here in the next couple months. That's amazing. And it's really a wonderful talk we're having here with Shearwater Health CEO Tom Kandrat. And it's great. I hope our Shearwater Health employees and team out there, I hope you're all enjoying this live stream and learning a lot from your CEO. And also, again, we spoke about technology earlier. I hope everyone is getting to connect with us yes. in real time. And, you know, and we're learning how to grow and develop together and see the future of this company. So really, Tom, platforms like this, it's really great for us to all, even if we're not in the same room yes. as everyone else, it's really great that we can reach them. It's very important it's right? an engagement perspective. Yeah, so I want to thank you again for taking the time to do this. Thank you. Thank I you think very it's, much. A, it's a pleasure and I enjoy talking about our business, enjoy talking about the healthcare industry and um, you know, some of the initiatives that are unique to Shearwater. Wonderful. So we are nearing the end of our live stream session. So let's have a little fun. All right. Why don't we? Love to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> so Tom, we have a little game for you called Fast Talk, if you'd like to indulge. Basically, I'm, it's going to be like a lightning round. Yep. I'm going to be asking you several questions. And don't even think, just the first answer that pops into your head, just answer that. And don't worry, there's no right or wrong answer because they're all about you. So, Excellent. are you game to play with uh, us? Of course I'm game to play. All right, so let's start this lightning round. First question, hot or cold? I like to ski cold. Indoors or outdoors? Outdoors, I like the mountains. Roller coaster or Ferris wheel? Roller coaster. Pasta or pizza? Oh, I went to Italy for my honeymoon, pasta. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Favorite dessert? Oh, Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Mmm, love that too. <laughs> Chunky monkey? Uh, I'm a mint chip, okay. chocolate chip cookie dough. Or cherry Garcia. Cherry Garcia. All of those, all and, of the above. And the kids also enjoy it. Yum. Every, yeah. I mean, who doesn't, right? right? Ben and Jerry's. You gotta love Ben and Jerry's. Favorite place to visit? Ooh. I should say the Philippines, but I have <laughs> to say um, it's probably going to be Italy. Okay. We won't be mad. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite show or movie? Seinfeld. Type of music? Country. Most used social media platform? LinkedIn, so I can engage with our employees. All right. Nicest thing you've received recently? These Shearwater Health pull pullovers. Actually, I want one. Can I have one too? <laughs> our CFO is sitting back there. They look there. really comfy. <laughs> <laughs> Your most used catchphrase? Wow. That's good. Maybe that's it. That's, that's a good it. answer. Wow. <laughs> I, I, I. That's a great answer. I, absolutely. Yeah, we accept that. First thing you do in the morning? I work out every morning. Breakfast or lunch? A smoothie for breakfast, salad for lunch. A superpower you'd like to have? Predict the future. 
Ooh. Okay, and there you have it. That ends our lightning <laughs> round. Thank you very much for being a good sport and Thank playing you. with us. And we definitely learned a lot about you. You know, when you ask fast questions and you answer quickly as well, that's the real you. So thank no, you for sharing a bit of your it's time with us. It's a great little program. I enjoy doing that. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Okay, now I just want to remind everyone, if you'd like to leave comments on the session of the live stream today, there will be a QR code that you can scan later or click on the link. Oh, it's here right now on the screens. There's a QR code. Go ahead and scan that. There's also a link in the chat box where you can follow and type in. Please leave your comments. We'd love to hear from you. And there you have it, everyone. Shearwater Health CEO, Mr. Tom Kendrod. Thank you very much again for joining us. And before we end today's session, and we never want it to end, you know, <laughs> but we do want to give you some time to enjoy Manila, yeah. however little you can, you know. Could you give us a last message you'd like to say to the Shearwater Health team, especially since March 3, which is tomorrow, is Employee Appreciation Day. Aziza, you stole my thunder. Oh, so I just, I'm sorry. I just record, I just record <laughs> a uh, message to our employees that is going to be released tomorrow. Okay. Um, and so what I would like to say is just thank you all. Um, thank you all for your commitment to Shearwater. Thank you for your commitment to the healthcare industry, the nursing profession if you're a nurse, the coding profession if you're a coder. Um, it's been great to see the success and, and get to know some of you um, remotely over the course of the last couple of years. And for those that have been dedicated to Shearwater employees for the past five to 10 years, it's been great to see you mature and, and, uh, and, and you know, really develop your careers within Shearwater. And so I just wanna thank all of our employees. And, and it's not just about the Shearwater employees, it's all, it's all healthcare workers yes. that really battled very difficult times during the COVID pandemic. And they've all committed themselves to uh, continue to, pr to practice in this profession. So I wanna thank all of our Shearwater employees, but I wanna thank all of our healthcare uh, professionals globally uh, for really battling through the COVID environment. And, um, and I want to thank you again for uh, hosting it. Uh, you did a wonderful job. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And I'd also like to say advanced, happy Employee Appreciation Day to everyone. And thank you again, Tom, for joining us. So again, guys, if you'd like to leave your comments, please scan that QR code or click the link in the chat box. We would love to hear everything you have to say <laughs> about tonight's live stream. Okay, so this has been Shearwater Health in focus. I'm Aziza Mondanero. Thank you for having me as your host. And again, our CEO, Mr. Tom Kendrat. Thank you once again. Thank you again. And you can say Mabuhay. Mabuhay. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great evening, everyone. Thank you. Okay, let's say watermelon, watermelon. watermelon.